Good morning, everybody. A bright and New Year's Eve morning. We are from Erie, so we are glad we are here, <laughs> not from you know, Pennsylvania today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. God gathers us from the north, from the south, from the east, and from the west to worship him. Will those who are able please stand as we worship God together? Men and women gather together and praise the Lord above. Young and old gather together and praise the one in our midst. Let us sing now together, good Christian friends rejoice, hymn number 28. Just a second, did I forget to put it in? Please turn to hymn number 28 in your hymnals because I apparently made an error here. Christian friends rejoice.
Jesus Christ was born to save. Jesus Christ was born for those of us who do bad things so that we can confess our sins knowing that we've been forgiven. Let us confess our sins now together. O oh God with us, you came that our minds might be renewed, that our hearts might be Jesus Christ forgives you, so be at peace. Offer Christ peace to one another. God speaks to us and beckons for us to listen. Let's prepare our hearts to hear God's word by singing the last verse of Away in a Manger. <coughs>
two fairly lengthy scripture passages for you. The first is the fact that Epiphany is on Saturday, and so we won't get to celebrate Epiphany next Sunday. So we're going to read that passage in Matthew 2, and then we're going to read the passage that was appropriate for today. From Matthew chapter 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. King Herod heard this. He was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. And then from Luke 2, we read these, these words. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by that, the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him into, in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, and she was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. But she never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the word of the Lord. Let's give our glory and praise to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As I know you all know, today is New Year's Eve. 
in mystic circles, they often call this the time between times because it's not the past and it's not the future. And what do we do this last week of the year? But we spend a lot of time looking past at what happened this past year and looking ahead to what we think might happen in the future. And we sit here on this day between the past and between the future. You know, there are two kinds of people in this world. There are people who spend their time remembering the past. And they spend a lot of time remembering. You could hear them saying, in the good old days it was like this, or I remember back when. And they spend a lot of time there. And then there are those who spend their time looking to the future. And they spend all their days saying, well, tomorrow it will be this, or maybe it will be better the next day, or next year, maybe this will happen. Well, I was wondering about what the Bible says about remembering and looking ahead. And there are words similar to the word remember, remember and reminding and those types of things, 354 times in the Bible. Now, they're not all the, just the word remember, but other words as well. And most of the time, when we see it, at least in the positive, it is to remember what God has done. That we are told to remember what God has done. And it's important for us to remember. But then I also looked at words that would be looking forward, or ahead, or watching, or waiting, or looking, that type of thing. And I found at least 306 words of those types. So almost the same number of remembering and looking forward types of words. And of course, most of those words are looking ahead for what God is going to do. Watch, look, see, press on towards the goal to see what God is doing. And in reality, we need both of these people. We need people who remember the past to keep us grounded, to keep us remembering that things will get better, to remind us of what has, the mistakes that we've made in the past and how we might be able to do things differently. But we also need people to look ahead into the future, to keep us moving forward. Otherwise, we just feel nice and comfy where we are. And so those people who look ahead are the ones who help us keep moving forward. But there's danger in staying in either one of these too long, isn't there? If we spend all of our time remembering the past, we keep doing the things that we used to do even when they don't work anymore. We spend time thinking about the good old days instead of realizing that the next days to come might also be good. And if we spend all of our time in the future, we don't learn from our past mistakes or even our successes. And oftentimes we find ourselves running willy-nilly ahead without any source of basis for what we're doing. The other thing with remembering the future and not remembering the past is that sometimes you leave things forgotten. I struggle a lot. I'm definitely a person who remembers the future. That's what I do. I'm constantly looking ahead, constantly looking to the next thing. That's actually part of a pastor's job. I know my mom has often commented on this, that she never knows what day I'm talking about because I might be planning for next week's worship and I'm planning for the next several months and I'm looking ahead to what's going to happen with the youth next year and I'm spending a lot of time in the future. And what that does is it keeps me forgetting what just happened in the past. And so oftentimes you all will come to me with a concern or a care or something that's going on in your life or some, a time when maybe I've hurt you or I've done something that's bothered you. And I'll say, okay, I'll give you a call. And I go home and I start thinking about the future and I forget the conversation that we've had. And so what you do is you say, that pastor, she doesn't care about me. Well, you may be slightly true. It's not that I didn't care, it's that I forgot. And I am extremely forgetful when it comes to the past. And so I apologize if there's ever been a time when I have not called when I promised to do so. I cannot guarantee I won't forget again in the future. But what I do ask is that if I didn't call, if I didn't come, 
feel free to call me and say, Pastor, I'd like to see you, and I will come. I sometimes need that schedule, that writing it down, and especially if you catch me at church, I cannot guarantee I will remember anything you said to me the next day, or frankly, at lunch. In my household, Pat's the one who remembers the past, and I'm the one who is constantly planning for the future. And, and I'm sure that we frustrate each other an awful lot, because my head is always in the future. His, in my mind, is always in the past. That's not really true. But, he, but the one good thing is that every time I have to fill out a form where you have to remember something, I say, Pat, when was it that? And whatever it is, and he's able to ask. And whenever we're planning for the future, he's able to say, Anita, what was it we were planning to do? And I'm able to tell him that. And so that's a good thing. It's good to be able to balance each other out. I often think, you know, they talk about how as we get older, we forget the future stuff, we forget the planning stuff, but we remember the way past. I'm waiting for that day, so maybe I'll start remembering all those past things. I have a feeling that's not the way it works. The problem with staying in either the future or the past too long is that we forget and we don't appreciate what's ex what we're experiencing right now. If we're constantly remembering the past, we don't realize how great we have it right now. If we're constantly looking to the future, we don't realize how great we have it right now. And we don't make the unnecessary changes needed to move forward but we also don't remember what has gone on before. So let's look at these three groups of people that we read in the scripture. We have the wise men. And the wise men were constantly forward thinking. They were always looking to the stars to find out what was next. What's next? What's going to happen? What are the heavens telling us? And we would say, what is God telling us that he's going to do? And even though they spent their time looking into the future, when they saw that star, when they saw that sign, they were brought into the present. And they said, we need to go right now and see what this star means. And so they changed what they were doing. Instead of sitting and observing the star, they physically went and they met the infant king. And it says in the scriptures that they experienced joy of being present and experiencing that. Now we have Simeon. And Simeon was an old man. Simeon was an old man who was looking for the salvation of Israel. He had been spending many, many years looking and praying about that and wondering when God would finally send salvation to Israel. He, I'm sure, spent a lot of time looking at the scriptures and trying to see if they might have said when this would happen. But he knew he had a promise. He knew he had a promise that the Holy Spirit would show him what God was doing. And so he was waiting and he was looking ahead. And when he saw the child, he was brought into that present moment and he changed what he was doing. No longer was he concerned about what was going on around him. He spent lots of time with that child. He no longer was worried about what was going to happen in the future because he knew that Jesus was the one who was going to... His years of waiting were over, and he experienced joy, and he praised God for it. Now, Anna was a different type of person. Anna was someone who spent a lot of time reliving her past. She had been married for seven years early in her life. She was now 84 years old, and she had been a wed widow most of those years. And she spent all of her time in prayer and fasting. And prayer and fasting are often the, the ways that one responds to grief. It's a way of mourning. We stop eating because we are mourning our loss. And so she spent a lot of time remembering those seven years and fasting over them and praying. Maybe praying that God would send her a new husband. But it had been a long, long time since she had had one. But when she saw the child... She was brought into the present moment. No longer was she living back in those beautiful days of her youth, but she was here and present now. Her whole demeanor changed, and Jesus brought joy to her mourning and a vision of hope for her future. So here we are at the precipice of a new year, 
Some of us are spending time looking back at what the way things used to be, and some of us are spending time looking ahead into that great beyond and wondering what's to come. And we may prefer to spend our days either in the past or in the future. But what we need to do right now is to look to Jesus. This is the perfect opportunity to take some moments and look to Jesus. And when we see Jesus, he can bring us into this present moment and show us what God is doing right now in our lives. And when we see what God is doing now, we will experience joy. The joy of knowing that salvation is coming into this world and that we have redemption for all people and that the world can be at peace. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Well, we do spend some time remembering our past as we remember our faith. And as we affirm our faith today, we are reading from the Scots Confession, a beautiful passage about who Jesus Christ is. When the time came, God sent his son. child is this we're using slightly different words that can be found on the screen
Well, now we come to our time of God sightings. Did anybody see God active in their life this week and would like to share it? Thank you. Uh, I hope this is the appropriate time, but uh, many of you may know that I had uh, knee replacement surgery uh, right before Thanksgiving. Uh, Garrett offered to do it for me, but uh, I actually <laughs> went, went up to the University of Wisconsin. And uh, I lived with one small glitch that Mary Ann discovered and we took care of, I've done very well. But the point of my saying something is that not about talk about my surgery, but to thank you for your prayers and your cards, and especially that card I got from the Navigators. Uh, I really appreciated your support, and I just wanted to thank everyone for it. Thank you very much. Looked you up and walking yeah. really well. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, my Aunt Heidi and the girls are here, and so it's just nice to see them. They came from Greece, so... It's cool to see them. Any other God sightings? This past week, as the snow fell, the beauty of all the white purity falling down from the sky, even though scientifically I know it's not pure snow, but the purity of God that blankets us and keeps us safe is a reminder that God is truly all around us. Well, I just wanted to share a little bit about Christmas Eve. Um, it's a neat thing that happens at our church on Christmas Eve. Most of you don't come, but that's okay because the church is filled with people we don't know, and I think that that's really neat. We have a whole group of people who come here on Christmas Eve, and they're people who come back year after year to be here at the 4 o'clock service because it's at 4 o'clock, and I think that that's really a cool thing. We had all kinds of kids here, which was neat because we were able to do the, the children's type of message and the kids really seemed to enjoy it and there were people who drove who made sure they drove up in the middle of a snowstorm from Rochelle because they like to come to our Christmas Eve service and so you know I don't know about those people who show up on Christmas Eve but if that's the only time that they come into a church in order to celebrate Jesus Christ that's okay and it was just kind of neat and I missed you all but it was neat to see all of those folks too They've become my Christmas Eve congregation, and I recognize them because many of them come in year after year. Darrow is coming along in his recuperation. Yes, he's, he, it's not going as quickly as he would like because, of course, he would like to be walking like you, John, and he's still only a couple of weeks out from surgery, and so he's not happy with the pain that he's experiencing, but he's coming along making more forward progress than backward at this point, so that's good. We want to continue to keep Jean Meissen in our prayers. Um, she's been having some complications after her surgery and has just had a slow go of it. She's still at Rockford Memorial and will be for an, uh, at least the rest, of, probably the rest of this week, at least a number of days, so keep her in our prayers as well. I haven't mentioned this before, and I'm not sure why, but uh, one of my friends has a 12-year-old son named Ashton, and uh, Ashton has leukemia, but he has had many, many, many weeks of complications. Uh, his lungs keep, keep uh, uh, collapsing. He's had fluid on his brain. He's had different kinds of swelling. His eyes have been going all fluey, and, um, and so he's had a lot of complications. Unfortunately, with every complication, they have to push back when he gets his chemotherapy. And so if you could keep Ashton in your prayers, I know his mom and he would really appreciate it as he's going through that. The other thing is uh, we have been praying on and off for Mindy Durbin. Mindy had a relapse, unfortunately. She, but, you know, she, she called me yesterday and she said, 
I went to my parole officer and said, put me in jail because I'll be safe there and I'll stop using. And so she went to jail and she said, and don't let me out until they find a rehab for me. And so that has happened and she's down in rehab in Bloomington and we'll be there for the month. So please be praying for Mindy that this does what it, this is the time. She says, I can't relapse again. And so we need to pray that she truly gets the strength that she needs with faith in order to make it this time and make this the last time that she is in, in this kind of recovery. Are there any other joys or concerns that we want to bring to the Lord? If not, then let's, uh, oh, there is one. Oh. This Peggy? No. About Peggy? <laughs> She had back surgery a couple weeks ago, and uh, uh, she's home, and she's doing a lot better. We even went to Cherryvale for a bit yesterday, and uh, that wore on her some. But she's coming along uh, maybe slower than what she'd like, but she's gaining. Good, good. Then let's come to God in prayer. Dear God, we thank you that you came to this earth to become one of us so that we might join you in heaven. And Lord, we know that you taught us how to care for one another, that you taught us how to love one another, how to pray for one another, how to be present to one another. And Lord, as we are ending one year and beginning the next, we pray, Lord, that we remember what you have done. We remember how good you have been and that we look forward to doing your will in the new year. Lord, we pray for those who are sick and for those receiving treatments and therapy. We pray for those awaiting tests and surgery. We pray for those in the final days of their life. Lord, we pray for caregivers. And we pray for those who mourn. We pray for the poor and the oppressed. We pray for those who are struggling to find work or a home or clothing or food. We especially pray for those who have no place to go in this cold, cold weather. Lord, we pray for those who are fighting against mental illness and addiction. And for those who are so overwhelmed by life that they are thinking about taking theirs. Lord, we pray for those who are living in violent places and for those dealing with human-made and natural disasters. And we thank you and pray for those who put their lives on the line to help us when we're in trouble. Lord, we pray for our leaders here and around the world. And we pray for your church, that we can continue to be a light in the darkness, that we can continue to be a, the place where people go to experience peace and love and joy. We pray this and all these things in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in
In your pews are the envelopes for the Christmas joy offering. We wanted to give you one more chance to give those. Hopefully they're in your pew. If not, check some other pew and they might be there. Uh, Christmas joy offering helps pastors who ha are going through a difficult time, maybe because of illness or something, some other reason. They also help uh, help our schools that deal uh, that are open for uh, people of color and other issues. And so we want to be remembering them uh, this year again, as we do every year. We are going to be having a congregational meeting at the end of January. The call is here. I'll read it to you in its entirety next week and the weeks after that. But if you have a report that you need to submit, please make sure you do that. It'd be awesome if you could do it this week so that, um, so that Dana would be able to have it done. Next Sunday is the final date for the, the um, annual report reports. Uh, we also, if you are able-bodied able and able to stay for a few minutes after worship, we're going to be removing Christmas. I can't believe it. It just seems like it's so soon. But we're going to be removing Christmas and uh, decorating again for uh, the new year. And so Betsy would appreciate all the help you can give for that purpose. If you haven't picked up your poinsettias, by all means, take them. Pat and I have two poinsettias there. We also have cats who eat the poinsettias. So if you want to take ours, feel free. I, we won't be upset if ours are missing. <laughs> so um, also, if you haven't gotten your offering envelope, it may be out on the table. And so I would encourage you to get that. We are giving tuna, tuna helper and hamburger to people helping people this next month. And so uh, keep that in mind as you go uh, shopping. Just a note again, if the weather outside is frightful and you aren't sure whether we're going to have please look on the television stations. We will hopefully have that there in a timely fashion on Sunday mornings. Um, cold does not count. So I had somebody text me this morning, are we having church because it's too cold? Yes, we are. <laughs> if it's chilly out. But if there is snow, there's likelihood that we may not. And uh, so we will do that. For example, in Erie, Pennsylvania, most of the churches were closed. Except my home church. They are open for 11 o'clock. I, I can't wait to find out how many people showed up. So. Um, I think that's it. Are there other announcements? Karen, I know you had one. The Women's Association the Women's Association will have an officers meeting next Sunday immediately following the 1020 worship service. I expect we'll meet for about a half an hour in the adult education room and we're going to review our program booklet and the schedule of events for next year. It's an open meeting so if anybody would like to attend you're welcome. Any other announcements? Let's continue God's mission to the world through our presentation of tithes and offerings.
Lord, you gave us the greatest gift of all, your very self, God with us, come into this world. May we continue to be your eyes and your ears and your hands and your feet as we offer our gifts and our lives to you to do your will, to bring your glory and your peace to this earth. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. And now let's sing together the first Noel. It's a long song. If you want to sit down during part of it, feel free.
those around us as we give and receive the blessing. <clears throat> The grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, the Holy Spirit keep you, that you may live in faith, abound in hope, and grow in love, both now and forevermore. Amen.